In this very short clip of oral radiology, I'm going to talk about few radiological features that you can often see or will be presented in your clinical judgment exam or other dental board exams. This is one of the most common radiograph that comes as a question in your dental board exam where you will be asked to identify the teeth where you can see the caries or there are chances when you will be asked what type of caries that you can see in the radiograph. So looking in this clip you can see various all the forms of caries coexist together in this patient and depending upon the extent of the caries they have been classified into various forms now if you look at the incipient caries number three it will you can see that the extent of the lesion is almost halfway through enamel not more than that which is enough to classify it as a incipient caries normally such caries are not treated or not operated upon and they have the best chance to remineralize. Now, there is another form of caries that is moderate, which is number four. In this case, the caries has extended past the halfway. So it's not into the dentine, but it's more than halfway through enamel. So we classify this caries as moderate. Then look at the number two type of caries which is pointed by the red arrow here you can see the caries has completely involved the enamel as well as you can see a small dark circle in the dentine as well which will give you an idea that it is a advanced form of caries now the most extensive form of caries is the sphere one in which the caries has extended more than halfway through dentine. So in this clip, number one pointed by the blue arrow, arrow is the kind of severe form of caries. The previous radiograph we talked about was taken using a bite wing and a XCP. So one of the most challenging part in diagnosing the interproximal caries is when we take the x-rays without using XCPs and that's when you can see the overlapping of the interproximal areas. In such a condition is very hard to identify the extent of caries and sometimes misdiagnosis could occur as well. This is a clip where you can see the pathology or the condition as well, as well as the cause of the condition. If you look at the bone loss on the right, pointing pointed by the purple arrow, it says, you can see that there is a saucer shaped cavity formed beneath the contact point. And you can also estimate the cause of the condition you can see that there is no proximal contact at all and it's causing the lodging of food in that part of the interproximal area further resulting into the bone loss this clip gives you an idea how re recurrent caries start to form underneath the restoration now one thing to remember is that if you consider that whole translucent or the dark line as a caries that won't be a good idea usually it initiates right at the margin below the restoration and start encroaching upon the healthy tooth this complete dark line could be resulting from a liner or it could result if a thick layer of bonding agent has been applied. So keep that in mind to differentiate it from the recurrent caries. In some radiographs, you will see that there is a hollow or a saucer shaped or a scooped out cavity, just like you see in this clip pointed by the yellow arrow. 
which will give you an idea it's that it's a restoration in place and you can corroborate that clinically when the patient is there so in your exam you could be asked what condition do you see it here and out of the choices you can either opt it for, for a restoration that is already in place or you can or if you see an option that says a restoration that has fallen out that could be one of your option as well alongside this yellow arrow you see two more arrows a purple and red the purple one points towards a moderate form of caries while the red one is pointing towards a advanced form of caries that are coexisting in the same radiograph in the adjacent teeth such a radiograph that you see in this clip might pose a question for you in the exam and you could be asked that what kind of radiolucency that exists uh, as pointed by the yellow arrow of course you can get an idea that it is a maxillary sinus but keep in mind and keep an idea that how far the maxillary sinus extends posteriorly as well as interiorly you could be presented with some situations and some kind of options when you need to differentiate it from other conditions as well the red arrow that you see here is giving an idea of the thickness of bone remaining post extraction of the tooth and could be a complication in the future when a prosthetic device is planned such as an implant or something else.